I'm going to read from the book of Proverbs today. And so it's going to be Proverbs 28, 13. 28, 13. And I'm reading from the Amplified Version. Proverbs 28, 13. Thirteenth proverb of the twenty-eighth chapter. And it reads, He who conceals his transgressions will not prosper. Mm. But whoever confesses and turns away from his sins will find compassion and mercy. Amen. May God add a blessing to the reading of his word. You may have your seats. Thank you, Lord. I want to speak to you briefly today as we continue our detox series. And the subject today is if the shoe fits, wear it. Just to be sure we are on the same page, I want you to tell me if you agree with these statements. You can't fix what you don't know is broken. Amen. Amen. Is that an agreeable statement? Yes. Yes. You can't fix what you don't know is broken. Right. Is this also an agreeable st statement? Yes. You can't fix what you don't acknowledge is broken. That's right. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Yeah, is that true? Yeah. You, you can't yeah. fix yeah. what you don't acknowledge right. is broken. Mm -hmm. I just want to make sure we, we start off on the same page here. Because, because if you don't agree with either one of those statements, then, then we'll have a little bit of an issue come on later down the line. But, but as long as we are starting off on the same foot, we, we should be just fine. And let me explain why it's important that we see this thing clearly. And if you've been driving long enough, you've had this happen, that someone behind you lets you know, do you know you have a light out? One of your tail lights is out. If you've been driving long enough, all of this has happened to, to us. You know, everybody is experiencing. It might be a police officer that pulls you over, and you see the blue lights, and you begin to think, oh, what in the world did I do? You looking at your speed, you looking over, you thinking in your mind, oh, Lord. And they tell you, you know, we stopping you because we want to let you know, did you know that you have a tail light that's out? And you say, whoo, okay, yeah, I, I did not know that, but thank you. They give you a fix-it ticket, and they tell you to go on, but you need to fix your tail light, because the thing is, if your tail light is broken, then if both of them go out, then someone behind you in, in, in inclement weather or if it's dark outside and you press your lights and you press your brakes, they can't see you, they can rear end you and someone could get seriously hurt. So, so there's a reason that they want you to have tail lights, right? right? A friend might tell you, did you know that you had a tail light out? The thing is, if the thing is behind you, there's really no way of you ever knowing unless you got a fancy car that tells you from the inside. And some cars do have this, but if you drive an old car like me, my van don't tell me nothing. Some of y'all got y'all got y'all got cars that will tell you when it's wrong, something's wrong with it. You know, it's like a human being. Um, oh, excuse me, I, I I feel a little low on my left tire. You might wanna y'all cars be telling y'all stuff. My car don't say jack. You know, you just ride along. <laughs> on the outside got to tell me, hey, uh, uh, something is wrong, especially if it's in the back of the car. You know, I would never see. That's something I don't know to fix because it's behind me. I, I don't even know that it's there. I mean, I have a conscience that I see other people have them, and when I get out the car, I see that they're there, but I wouldn't have no way of really knowing if I press the brake. I can't be in two places at one time. When I press the brake, what's going on back there? So that's not knowing that there's an issue to fix. That's right. Not being able to fix something that you don't know is broken. But then there are the things that we just refuse to acknowledge yeah. as broken. All right. 
It's not that we don't know they are broken, because a lot of times we see evidence of their brokenness. We just have become so accustomed to them being broken, now we call this dysfunction, that we've learned to operate despite the brokenness. And so today I'm not going to talk about the things that we don't know are broken. Today, I want to focus on the things we don't acknowledge are broken. The things that we would prefer to pretend are all right. Guess what? Pretending that things are all right don't make them all right. When you pretend, and oftentimes people will pretend right on along with you. They'll pretend right beside you, and you think you're hiding something from everyone in the world, and reality is we just playing your game with you. That's right. We see it. We know what's going on, and, and we've noticed that there's something broken, but we've also noticed that you've noticed it, but you are lacking to acknowledge it. Okay. And we'll play right along. So no. We won't say, now we don't want to offend anyone. We don't want to hurt anyone's feelings. We don't want to be the one to pinpoint because it's often the times that people are refusing to acknowledge something. That is the very thing that if you put it out in the open for them to see, that is the thing that's gonna hurt them the most. And most of us are kind people and so we say to ourselves, I'm not gonna do that to him. I'm not gonna do that to her. That doesn't make sense for me to put that out there. If she don't want to acknowledge it, if he don't want to acknowledge it, well, I'm just going to let it be too. And today, I want to put this before you. You have a choice today. And here's the options. If you want to leave out of here on a road to real change, then you're going to have to do this. You're going to have to be brutally honest with yourself today. All right. I'm not saying anybody else. In fact, most of the time, I'm not going to ask you to talk. I don't want to know what you're about to do and what the honesty is that you are going to admit to yourself. I'm talking you. You be honest with you. I'm not even going to say you be honest with God because in my opinion, there's really no no such thing as dishonesty with God because God knows all. So how you being dishonest with somebody that knows what exactly he done seen you do it. So how you being dishonest with God? Like So not even with God. It's about you being brutally honest with you. Yeah. Or you have this choice. If you want to go through the motions, and you want to leave out of here the same person that you were when you walked in, then you can continue to just ignore and not acknowledge anything about yourself that would cause any change. The thing is, today we should become a little uncomfortable. Right. You have a choice. You can say, well, Pastor, I ain't come to church to feel uncomfortable. And that's all right. If you didn't come for uncomfortable, that's cool. I get it. Just sit there and play along and pretend like you're doing it. And then when you leave out of here, this is what I will promise you'll be the same person. Yeah. But you didn't you won't leave out of here no worse than what you came in. But if you are somebody in here today, just like last week I said, I ain't going 28 days for and not eating for nothing. I want some change. I want to be different. I really want something to change in my life. Well I'm about to give you something. I'm about to give you some meat and I need you to chew on that meat. I need you to digest that meat. I need you to be brutally honest with yourself. And I promise you this, when you leave out of here, you will be on a road to true healing and true change. Nothing's going to, I will say this, you will not change sitting right here. This ain't going to be a miraculous, oh my God, I made an acknowledgement and look at me, I'm different now. I'm not even going to say that. that. Now, if God will want to do that, that's called a miracle. And I'm not going to say and discount God that he will perform a miracle for you today. But what I do know is that miracles are few and far between and sometimes he chooses to give them out and sometimes he doesn't. Sometimes he says, I'm not going to work a miracle on this. It's work that you need to do to get yourself out of it. And so if you're willing to acknowledge it, then you can fix it. But it's about acknowledging it. The Bible says that those that refuse to acknowledge their mess 
will not prosper. The you doctors just change it up. It says since transgressions, but you know, it's mess. We know what mess is, don't we? <laughs> Yeah. I'm just gonna put it plain. Mess. It's mess. We keep up mess, don't we? Uh, we, we got mess going on in our lives. And, and those of us that don't want to acknowledge it, those of us that want to conceal our mess, we will not prosper. That's what the Bible says. Alright, man. Alright. I'm talking to those who refuse to stay the same today. Amen. I'm gonna be different. I'm gonna do something different to get something. Different. I want to do a little exercise, and this is why I asked you to bring two pairs of shoes with you. And it's okay if you if you didn't bring two pairs, if you didn't know, or if you forgot. I'm also going to do the exercise, and so you can see the exercise being done visually around you and and myself. What I want you to do is, and if you feel comfortable is enough to take a shoe off. You can take both shoes off if you want, but, but really I don't necessarily need you to hold on to, hold on to both of them. Just one is, is, is sufficient. And it's not about what shoe somebody has. I will say, hey, do your chest, you know, don't wave your shoe around. <laughs> so an older eater in that joke or something, <laughs> you know, just do a little test, you know, don't, don't offend nobody up in here. It's hot, so you gotta stuff your kids up in the, in the heat, so, you know. I want you to place your spare pair, just set that underneath your chair or to, to the side or something. Don't worry about those right now, just kind of put those somewhere for a second. We're going to focus on the shoe that we just had on our feet. We, we walked in, everybody walked in with some shoes on their feet. I, I want you to, to hold it, and, and I want you to understand that I'm, I'm, I want this to represent something to you. This shoe right here, the shoe you walked in with, is going to represent how you walked in here and the burden that you came in here with. Some of us don't even know that we came in with burden because we've been, we've been infusing to acknowledge burden. Right. But we're about to acknowledge some burden today. This shoe contains all of the brutal honesty about you, all your transgressions. And I want you to start naming them. You don't have to audibly name them out loud because honestly this isn't between you and the person sitting next to you. This is between you and you. And the reason we're holding on to the shoe is because I, I, I want to show you something and, and the shoe is going to represent the brutal honesty of who you are. Mm -hmm. You know who you are. Yes. And you know who you've been. You know who you are right now. That's right. And truly, some of us have to be honest with ourselves that when we really dig deep, we're not perfect. That's right. And it's easy for us to say, I'm not perfect. But then when we say, well, in what ways are you not perfect? You become silent. You don't want to actually say out loud the ways in which you lack imperfection. Hmm. But some of us are cheaters. Name that into the shoe. All right. Some of us haven't had one faithful relationship. That's what you name it what it is. You cheater. You ain't had one faithful relationship. Well, I'm in one right now. Well, if you've been a cheater, then chances are it ain't nothing changed, and chances are you about to cheat on them too. You a cheater. Just go ahead and name it. Be brutally honest with yourself. Can't stay in a relationship. I got in and out. Name that, whatever that's called. I mean, if you ain't got the name for it, just say, I bounce in and out of relationships. I can't commit. Huh? Commitment issue, whatever the name is. Some of us were not good parents. Not name it off. Be honest about it. I, I failed my kids. I wasn't there for them. I didn't teach them respect. I didn't give them the life skills to leave up out my house and to be a productive member of society. 
Now I have someone who is a degenerative that's probably still sucking on me. Though they are up in age, 20 and 30 years old, you got to own that thing. I messed up. Put that on there. The shoe fits, you gotta wear it. My Lord. Own it. Come on. Some of us are jealous. Mm -hmm. Partner can't leave out the house for five minutes, so we call it. And, and where are you at? And, and, and they take five extra, ten extra minutes to get home, and we already think they with somebody else. Jealousy. I name it. Put it on there. Some of us are liars. And the reason that your partner asking you all times of the day where you at and what, how, who you with is because you ain't been honest. You're a liar. Put it on there. Own it. It's who I am right now. See, it's hard to acknowledge ourselves sometimes. That's right. And I said brutal honesty. See, some folk should be weeping right now because if you for real honest and you naming off some of this stuff, you don't like what you see. Own it. Own it. We've been putting it in a closet and we've been piling it up and we've been, oh, oh that's me, but I'm going to put it away because I don't want nobody to see that that's me and I'm going to play it off like I'm perfect. And I'm going to jump in relationship, not just love relationship, but relationship, friendships, church relationships. I'm going to jump in relationships pretending I'm someone that I am not and then wonder why all goes down the drain because I didn't come in brutally honest. Right. I've been fake. On that, I've been fake. Some of us, we, we married, but we're horrible spouses. We don't honor our vows. Put that on there. All right. I put things before God. I put people before God. Some of us ain't faithful to God. Put that on there. Some of us are greedy. Own it. If you're greedy, you're greedy. Own it. Some of us can't be alone. We jump in and out of relationship and we got to have somebody because we can't stand ourselves long enough to be by ourselves for any particular amount of time. Own it. Low self-esteem. Own it. No self-esteem. Own it. You don't like yourself. Own it. Nothing's going to change until you can acknowledge them. Amen. See, we about change today. Nothing's going to change until you can acknowledge it. Until you can say, yeah, that's my shoe. That's my shoe. I walked in here with this shoe. Angry, hurt, bitter. My Lord. That's my shoe. Mm -hmm. That's mine. I'm not perfect, and, and here are the ways in which I'm not. I, I'm naming them off, and there's other things, not just the ones that I've been naming off from the stage. But and you know, I, I don't prescribe necessarily to the don't worry about what other, don't care about what other people say about you. Let me tell you something. We took a, a, a valuation not too long ago. I asked all y'all internet evaluation to evaluate us, and, and y'all, I love y'all. Y'all brutally evaluated me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But I'm going to tell you this, if I can't own, if more than 30 and 40 percent of y'all is saying that I'm standoffish and that y'all can't come and talk to me, guess what I got to own? That's my shoe. Mm -hmm. I've done something to make that happen. Y'all don't, it ain't y'all, it ain't the 30 and 40 percent that's wrong, that's me. I got to own. Now, if it's one person that say it, now, all right, maybe it's just them, because chances are they didn't told everybody the same exact thing, and maybe they the standoffish one. But if 30 and 40 percent of the people are saying the same exact thing, guess what you got to own it. And then you got to, when you own it, how am I going to change it? That's right. See, oftentimes what happens is we begin to blame other people and other things. Yeah. We'll acknowledge because if it's put in front of our face, we'll say something like, well, okay, well, all right, that's me, that's my shoe, but it's because they bought me that shoe. Somebody else tends to blame for me having this shoe. Let me tell you, if you are over the age of 21, I'm sorry it's no one else's fault. Who you are, your behavior, your lack of progress is no one else's fault. 
after you get over about 21 years old. You got to let some of that go. You can no longer use as an excuse the things that happen. Don't let nobody else be a scapegoat for your wretchedness. Yeah. Your hard childhood is no excuse for you being a slug today. You got to go ahead and just let that go. You a slug that put that on the shoe. I'm a slug. Hard childhood that you went through that already. It's not the reason. It can't be your excuse anymore. Your abuse as a child is no excuse for you not holding down a job today. You don't like work. Put that on the shoe. <laughs> so we'll use excuses. Oh, well, because I had this happen to me, I didn't know. We have in the age of information, you have access to everything that you will ever need to know. You can literally Google or YouTube how to do everything that you will ever need to know. And if you're not doing it yet, you're refusing to acknowledge that something is broken, it will never be fixed. Own it. There's books out here, piles and piles and piles of books that will teach you how to be a good parent, that will teach you how to manage your money, that will teach you. There's resources right here in this church that will teach you all of the things that you're saying that someone else hindered you from doing. Some of my person over here didn't do this. This person over here didn't do that. And I never learned how to do this. Excuses over. Over. Your divorce 20 years ago is no excuse for your inability to manage your money today. Yeah. Oh, man. Oh. Amen. Own it. The terrible loss of a family member when you were younger is no excuse for your addiction today. Yeah. Own it. Amen. Where someone else failed you is not an excuse for you failing now. Yeah. Own it. Amen. Amen. If you are over the age of 18, you are legally responsible for yourself. So you need to own your stuff. Amen. Oh, it's quiet in here. Toes flat. Yes. You gotta stop pointing at other people. What is your part? Where have you failed? What is your transgression? And guess what? My shoe does not look like your shoe. And you don't know what it's like to walk in my shoe. And I don't know what it's like to walk in your shoe. That means I'm not going to judge your shoe. I'm not judging your shoe. Mostly because I have my own shoe to deal with. I got my own stuff up in here that I'm looking at. So I'm not even looking at your shoe. I don't care what's on your shoe. I, I'm worried about what's on my shoe. That's why Jesus said, before you go off judging somebody else, remove the plank from your own eye so that you can see clearly the speck in your brothers. I'm worried about the plank over here, and you should be worried about the plank over there. Right. So it's not about, don't feel like pastor beating me up over here, pastor judging me, pastor saying this because I got my own up here. Amen. We all do, unless you are Jesus sitting on the throne and came down for a second for a service, then you have a shoe that you wore in here and that shoe got some mess attached to it. That's right. And it's about understanding that the Bible says that if we will agree, if we will confess our transaction, if transactions, if we will acknowledge our transactions, I can't say the word now, transgressions. <laughs> Our mess, exactly. Then they will be forgiven and we will then prosper. I have enough of my own stuff. I want you to go ahead and put those shoes back on. I want you to I want you to be in them for a minute. See, ignoring it won't fix it. But you can't fix what you won't acknowledge is broken. Right? We were tracking a minute ago when I asked it the first time. And make sure we still on there. You can't fix what you keep hiding. When I was about 10 years old, I got into a fist fight with a neighborhood boy down the street. Yeah. 
It was a boy, he was a little bit older, and he had been making fun of me, and I got into a fight with him. And I didn't prepare, you know, you don't prepare for a street fight. You know, had I prepared, I would have come dressed <laughs> for a fight. But I was just spur the moment, you know, I got angry, and we got to throwing blows. Mm -hmm. I was wearing my favorite gold chain mm -hmm. that I had just gotten for like my birthday or Christmas or one of those holidays, and, and I had it on during the fight, and, 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 and he reached up at some point during the fight, and he, because I believe I had him like on the ground, I just remember him reaching up, and he grabbed a hold to the chain, and he snatched it off my neck, mm -hmm. and he threw it. And I really let him have it then. And after the fight, I found the chain in the grass. Mm -hmm. And the link on the chain was broken. So there was no piecing it back together. There was no, you know, fixing it or whatever. It wasn't the clasp, so I couldn't even put it. It was like one of the links in the chain. And, and I went and I hid that chain in my drawer. And I put it in the back of the drawer and I closed that drawer. And my mom, eventually a couple of days later, began to inquire as to where is your chain? You wear it every day, where is your chain? And, and I lied and I said, well, I, I, I don't want to lose it, so I put it up for safekeeping. And she said, okay, and she, she you know, left it alone or whatever. And as the months and the years passed, she every now and then would ask me, where is your chain? And, I'd make up some excuse as to where it was. And, Did you lose it? No, I didn't lose it. And I think one time she even asked for me to bring it out so she could see it. And, and I held on to the actual broken part in my hand and I, I brought it out. And I'm like, see, here it is right here. And she couldn't see it was broken because to her it looked whole. And she's like, oh, okay, well, as long as you didn't lose it. Oh, no, I didn't lose it. And I put it back, you know, and hid it back. You know, I'm slick when I was kids. I don't know about y'all, but I was slick. Yeah. So so I um kept hiding that chain. And it never got fixed. I remember when I got ready to leave the house after that. I was about ten when it broke when I was seventeen I left the house. I found it. And it was too late by then. You know, the chain that you wore when you were ten, trying to spend money to fix it when you're seventeen, it ain't worth it. And that chain ended up getting thrown away. But what if I would have just said, you know what, Mama, I broke the chain. Wow. See, I was afraid that if I said I broke the chain, she would then want to know what I was doing to have the chain break. Yeah. And I was afraid that if I told her that I was fighting mm -hmm. and got the chain broken, that I would have gotten in trouble, not for breaking the chain, but for the fight. That's right. And so what I was really hiding from my mother was not the broken thing. I had no problem acknowledging the broken thing. It was the reason it got broken to begin with. Yeah. And some of us right now have a broken thing that's inside. And it's not the broken thing that we don't want to expose to God and say, God, this is broken. I don't know how to fix it. But it's more so the reason it's broken that we're ashamed of. Huh. I need all shame to be erased from you right now. The Bible says that there is no condemnation in Christ Jesus. Which means that there is nothing that you need to be ashamed about. The devil is the accuser of the saints. Which means that he will bring about shame on you. And see, shame will keep you hidden. Shame will keep you covered. The Bible says that when Adam and Eve realized they were naked, they became ashamed. Right. See, they covered their nakedness, but it was more so a symbol of the disobedience that they had toward God. What they were covering was not their nakedness. What they were covering 
thing was their disobedience. Yeah, that's right. The shame of disobedience made them cover up and hide from God. But I need you to know today that there is nothing, there is no condemnation in Christ Jesus. You need not be ashamed. God brings about conviction, not shame. Conviction is a different feeling. Conviction will make you change. Conviction will say, oh man, okay. And it gives you empowerment to do better. Shame will make you feel bad about yourself and hide even further. And the shoes that you are wearing on your feet, you need not be ashamed of those shoes. These are your shoes. That's right. You've done some things in your life, as all of us have done, That's right. that put you in these shoes. Your shoes are no more messed up than my shoes. And my shoes are no more messed up than your shoes. Because in the sight of God, it's all the same. You're not a bad person for the shoes you have on your feet, no matter what you've done. You're not a failure for the shoes that you have on your feet. There's nothing wrong with you for the shoes you have on your feet. They're your shoes. And you acknowledge them. Because guess what? There's more than one pair of shoes that come in your size. And the shoes that you have on your feet right now, eventually, if you do the work, you can take those shoes off. All right. And eventually, yes. if you do the work, yes. you can put a new pair of shoes on. All right. And the new pair of shoes mm -hmm. doesn't have all of the stigma right. of the old pair. Right. See, the new pair represents yes. the opposite of everything that was wrong in these shoes. Right. These shoes represent I am financially stable. Yes. These shoes represent I am a good mother or father. These shoes represent I am a good spouse. These shoes represent I am faithful. These shoes represent I am a good person. I am a clean person. I am not addicted. I am not oppressed. I am not depressed. These are the shoes that are waiting for you to put on. Take off the old shoes and shoes. It's not as easy as putting on a new pair of shoes. There's work to be done in real life, but this is a symbolism of what can be. You acknowledge what is wrong, fix it, and put on some new shoes. Yes, yes, yes. yes. <laughs> Although I wear these shoes today don't mean these are the same shoes that I'm going to have on tomorrow. Right. See, just because you see me walking around in these kind Say we fall down, but we get up. Yeah. 
That's right. Amen. We get up. Amen. Don't allow the shoes to keep you down. Amen. There was a commercial, and we about to get out of here when I was coming up. There was a whole bunch of kids. They were able to jump high. Y'all remember this commercial? And they had a tag that they say, gotta be the shoes. Because the shoes were the Michael Jordan, if I'm not mistaken, they were the Michael Jordan shoes. And so when you put the shoe on your feet, you were supposed to be able to jump like Mike. Yes. And so the kids would go off to the basketball court. They put on the Michael Jordan shoes and they go play basketball. They would be jumping real high and they would say, gotta be the shoes. Right. Well, I want you to leave out of here today and I want you to go do some stuff that you ain't never been able to do. And you just say in your mind every time you make a, a, a feat that you weren't able to make prior to this conversation, you just say in your mind, gotta be the shoes. Because these are my new shoes that I wear. I'm able to do exceedingly abundant because my God is able, so it got to be the shoes. I, I'm able to lean on God for what God has for me. Got to be the shoes. I'm able to set my finances straight. Got to be the shoes. I'm able to set my marriage straight. Got to be the shoes. I'm able to set my children straight. Got to be the shoes. Every relationship going to be put in order. Got to be the shoes. My church relationship going to be put in order. Gotta be the shoe. I'm about to make a life change. It's gotta be the shoe. God has a pair of shoes for me. It ain't the shoes I walked in in. These are shoes that He has for me to walk in. Gotta be the shoe. Gotta be the shoe. Y'all go get y'all healing. Healing comes once you acknowledge. Yeah, that's right. We did a lot of acknowledging. Mm -hmm. Don't you sit on the acknowledge spot. See, it's easy to sit in the acknowledge. Well, I did it. You get to lamenting. Oh, I did this. Oh, I fell here. Oh, I'm so horrible. Acknowledging. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you did. You, you wrong. <laughs> yeah, you messed up. I, I'll be honest with you. You did. You messed up. Mm. Mm -hmm. That's all right. That's all right. Get up. Get up. Get up. It's not too late. If you feel that you are a parent and you've lost your child, we tell you about children. We're resilient. Most of the time, all a child wants is an acknowledgement and an apology. And children come floating back in. <laughs> you never stop loving your parents. You can fix that relationship. That's an easy one. Easy in theory. The work is hard. The children, they don't just automatically, I'm, I'm making it so easy just to say that we are resilient and it can happen. We're not like regular people. Your child. Think about how you feel with your mom and dad. Yeah. If they messed up, but they came to you and said, in a sincere way, I acknowledge I messed up. I love you, and I'm sorry. What would that do for you? Your kids don't feel any different to you than you feel to your parents. See, the thing is, some of us will never get that apology and acknowledgement from our parents. Right. It just ain't gonna happen. No. They're not here to hear this sermon. That's right. But you are. Yes. Hey. Yes. You do right. Yes. By yours. Yeah. Hmm. So they don't return the cycle to someone else. That's right. That's right, Pastor. Your spouse is not much different than a parent. They really want to hear an acknowledgement and an apology. They want to hear you say, I, I messed up. That's right. But I'm willing to do the work to fix this. That's right. They want to see something 
in the process. They want to see you do better. They want to see what you're doing to make a change. And, and if they see that, that's a relationship you can fix too. Your friends, some of those can be fixed. Some of you don't need them to be fixed. They need to just go by the wayside anyway. That's right. Mm. That's right. Well, that's What I'm trying to say is, nothing is lost, and nothing is too late. Today you walk out of here in brand new shoes. Yeah. Yeah. A new opportunity to be someone different. That's right. And every morning that you wake up, the Bible says God's mercies are new. Another opportunity to be brand new. Yeah. What you gonna do with it? Yeah. What are you going to do with your next brand new 24 hours? What are you going to do to change you, to make yourself better? What will you acknowledge and what portion of you will you begin to, to make a little bit different? 